Hello and welcome to World War II TV. We're looking at another photo for our Conflict on Camera series. But before we have the photo, I'm going to introduce my guest, Lawrence Robinson from Film and War website and Twitter and expert on all things uh, with regards Finland and World War II. Hello, Lawrence. Hey, thanks for having me here. So the photo, what's the backstory about the photo? Well, let's start with when was it taken first? Well, we were taken around the summer of 1941. Uh, just after Operation Barbarossa had kicked off. And the composition is interesting, but we'll touch on that in a minute, but it's a fake shot, isn't it? But it's the photographer himself is the interesting factor because he's much better known for another photo, which we'll bring you in in a minute. But let's look at the circumstances photo and this unusual composition of a moose. All right, well, well, first off, it's it's a reindeer and not a moose. So during, many people kind of know... Barbarossa kicked off and Germany flooded across the divide they made between the Soviet Union. But not everybody knows that also at the same time, there was a, a front going on in the north uh, in the Scandinavian area. And what you see is a small mountain core that they formed that took troops that they'd occupied uh, Norway with and were crossing towards Murmansk. And to support this, they, they obviously used uh, Luftwaffe. And what we see in the, in the picture is basically an air raid. But it's a composition of at least three different photos or, or parts of images, if I'm correct on it. So the reindeer was just standing around during this air raid. So what would have been going on during the air raid? And, and because the hurricanes we can see in the background are superimposed at a, a later date, aren't they? Yeah. So, so what happens was, is the photographer was assigned to Murmansk to take photographs of, of the attack and, and of the defense of the area. And so an air raid came and he gives an interview later on in life. He said basically how he and the men around him, they, they jumped into a trench. So he was there. And then not long after, he said that a reindeer basically ran up to the trench where they were like looking very shocked. And he used the word that looked very shocked, looked very panicked. And he just knew that he had to take that photo of the reindeer standing above the trench, looking out sort of over the landscape. And that, that's how he gets that initial shot. And he was known, as I understand it, for, for these, what we would call now photoshopping, but obviously weren't using Photoshop mm -hmm. to the composing of shots using multiple images. And, you know, he... You know, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, he kind of defended it as part of his art of creating these images that were striking uh, and, and sent a message. So in your research in this, what, by adding the explosion, by adding the hurricanes overhead, what particular message was he trying to get across? From what I've gathered on uh, reading, and that, and that seems to be the hardest because a lot of people focus on his later photos, but it seems to be like this was first official war photo. He was going for the idea of the contrast between nature and technology, like this whole killing machines, these man-made objects of destruction, and how not only do they affect humans, but they're basically like they're striking down all life. No one is safe. Nothing is safe at all. And it, when you look at it, like it is, the whole picture is very dramatic. You're seeing the hurricanes in the background. There's a bomb going off. And then there's just this reindeer standing there. And it, it looks so unnatural in, in a way that like the reindeer is just standing there. And you're just like, why is it there? It does, doesn't look right. So it's also almost like overexposed, isn't it? It's very, it's very black and white. It's very. I wonder whether he played around with it in the, the negative there to get that image. But it's definitely said something. But what do we know about the photographer himself? We know that like he was born in Ukraine and like he was brought up in a very uh, communist supporting family later on in life, and he seemed to fall in love with photography at a very early age. Took his first photo at thirteen using a homemade camera but it seemed to be that like he was very much into photography from an early age and he decided to pursue that career uh, eventually going to school to, to learn it and then joining TASA's photography department uh, in 1939 and from there slowly becoming a photojournalist was sent to do mainly just when there was a new dam a hydroelectric dam uh, he was sent to there to take photographs of it and took some celebrities. And But his career really didn't take off until, until the Second World War. He was assigned to the Navy and was sent as a journalist. And his first stop was Romance, where he took this striking photograph 
he took several photographs, just everyday ones. A lot of the ones that we see of Murmansk uh, during during the, the beginning of the conflict are his photographs. And obviously later on, he gets more and more famous. And we, we end up obviously with the whole raising of the, the Reichstag flag. That's the one that everyone everyone knows. That's the one that people think about whenever this name is mentioned. And I'm going to butcher it, but it's Yev, Yevgeny Galde. Yeah, I'm glad you had a go at it and not me. And we'll, we'll get sure someone I, bound to correct us in the uh, in the comments. But you know, it's. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be someone who will who will rip me to shreds and correct me. And, and there's probably uh, Ukrainian pronunciation and a Russian pronunciation. They're probably different. But yeah. and we will perhaps do another show in the future about the famous Reichstag photo. But you know, when I put out on Twitter this plea for um, coming on and talking about photos, did this photo kind of immediately come to your mind? Yeah, it has. Like it's sort of like immediately I knew that photo had to be in there because. I've seen it being used because during the continuation war, the Soviet Union raised a reindeer battalion. And so a lot of people have attributed to that. It seems to me like it was the one that led him to realize that he could make these composites to enhance the Im images, to, to get more powerful meaning behind them. Yeah, I mean, he, he looks to me more as an artist more of an artist photographer role rather than a kind of a raw journalist photographer. I mean, there's all sorts of images come out of the war. There's those sort of moments in time where camera just gets turned and it captures that moment. And there's other ones like the flag raising the Wajima where it's a sort of a staged and created expression of something else. So this one definitely has got an artistic you know, approach to it. But just before we bring an end to it, do we know when the photo of the hurricanes was taken? What circumstances that photo came about? I don't, unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to find the background of why, like like where it was taken from, but my understanding is that he also took that photo too from the area. So I'm going to guess that it has to be connected to the, the hurricanes that were sent by by the British for number one five one wing that were assigned for several months to help train uh, Soviet pilots in the use of them uh, and even operated against German aircraft in the area. And, and I think, I believe that they claimed something like 16 kills during their time there. And a few of them were awarded uh, the Order of the Red Banner as well. Well, I think we've covered what we have to do in this. It's an interesting photo. So uh, thank you very much for Lawrence for joining me. And you're welcome to come back and do something about Finland again, the Winter War. We've been discussing things on Twitter about working together, but that is something that I'd like to do again and perhaps as a photo from the winter war we could anal analyze in a future show but anyway it All remains right. me to say thank you very much for joining us and well, uh, this is me. world war ii tv another episode of conflict on camera don't forget to click the subscribe button check us out on patreon i've got links in the description below to lawrence's website and twitter so you can follow him and find out more about what he's up to with history historical research and uh, apart from that i will see you all again so thank you very much for watching